Here goes the blimp. Blimp. Oh, blimp, blimp, blimp. <laughs> Rip the dream. Klaus gets hit right away there with the black air bombs and the blimp falls. What do you do with the double clone now? What do you do? How do you get the town hall down? Reviders are banned today. We are back into the on fire invitational. We got a nice team over from Nepal. 69 gaming taking on Navi today. And with a Ruvider ban, we would expect to see a little bit more variety of what these guys use. And we'll see if those double power wars happen or if we can maybe see some defenses here because obviously Ruvider's are very hard to stop, but you could potentially stop a lot of the other attacks in the game. But we'll see what happens here. As Picasso makes his way in with the hero dive into Lalo. Now, this is the Sui Lalo, so it's the hardest variation of Lalo in general. Because we need to have lots of different things going on at the same time here. With all the different spells not being used in advance, but being used on the fly during the blue drops. So we can get into the base there without having to use a Skelly Donut or Lightning to set it all up in the first place. But down south there, the Queen of the World Champion keep on moving. They're making their way all the way to the core of the base there. The Blimp was able to secure the Channel Takedown with the Ward ability protecting it all the way in, using a Life Gem onto that, holding his, most of his Lava Hounds and uh, deploying them into different parts of the base there. But the World Champion is going to assist with the Queen getting another Multi Inferno. And if that Multi goes down, there's nothing that can stop this from going through. Just blanking the bases here and spells as the Blooms make their way forward. Continuing to collapse in more Blooms all around the edge of the base makes forward and that's how you get it done with Lalo that is definitely the hardest variation because you're trying to manage so many different spells at the same time and that's just what you have to learn how to do but then again after we see what these guys can do in their speed attack meta then we know that they can multitask like madmen but Navi if you didn't hear Navi just came in second place in our golden ticket competition, Synchronic just qualified to the World Championship as they were able to beat Navi. So congratulations to Navi for getting second place in our golden ticket competition. And congratulations to Synchronic for sweeping the lower bracket, beating Navi twice in that grand finals, and getting their first qualification into the World Championship after they won the uh, last, uh, the, uh, they, they won the warm up, they won the World Championship warm up. And so Navi will uh, obviously be able to be playing in the next World Championship Golden Ticket, so that means we get to see more Navi before they have uh, more opportunities to get in the World Championship, and I really, really hope that they get there. However, we're going to see Madam going in with a, uh, looks like Electro Dragons to go into the core of the base. He's got the blimp, going to sail through, going to get the Town Hall not taken down with that blimp, but can he get some chains? He's got some opportunities, lots of opportunities to get some chains in to finish off that Town Hall, but, uh-oh. 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 Oh, no. Well, 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 that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Can he still get a chain to get the town hall down? He'll freeze it. Still got an opportunity right here. This is it. This is it. Nope, nope. The chains. The chains go over to the battle builder. It can't chain through because the chains will always go to the building that is touching rather than the building that has a gap. And the, the builder doesn't have the access to be able to chain into the town hall there. So he can't chain that. He'll rage up the world champion though and try to get it through, but she's getting stalled by ground skellies. Got Ice Golem's coming her way there. Taking the artillery strikes there. Pops her ability. Come on, go RC. Now stuck in the tornado. Oh, come on, Warden. Come on, Warden. Come on, Warden. No, he cannot get it. Neither can the Phoenix. Wait, the Phoenix fix it up. Oh, jeez, that was as close as you can get to a one-star without going to a one-star. But my goodness, what a <laughs> what a struggle to get that down. And that Phoenix clutches out of his mind. But, you know what? Navi's got the lead as we kick off the war. And these guys, wait, are they named 69 Gaming for a reason? Are they, are they named 69 Gaming with good reason? Come on, come on, come on. Oh, rip the dream. They can't even get that. Kazuma just picked up that defense and not deterred by seeing a dragon attack or I guess electro dragon attack with a miss. He will be sending in dragons of his own as he goes for the clone and the couple invisibility here, which could be enough for a super minion bomb. That's what my guess is going to be popping out of this blimp. The blimp's going to sail across the base here and we'll try to get the town hall down and so I like these Root Rider Band tournaments is because we are seeing more variety. We see Lala, we see E-Drags, we see Dragons, we see Clone Super Minion Bomb dropping right into a Tornado Trap, but he shifts his invisibility. 
And it looks like he will lock onto the town hall and he's gonna take it down, but he's not only gonna get that, he's gonna get the monolith as well. Yes, sir, indeed it is, but all the dragons have veered all the way to the outside of the base there. The artillery is still standing in the far left side. He has troll tests in the right hand corner, which he was not able to get past to get a rocket balloon into the air defense, but he has more into that area. So a couple balloons on standby. So that's World Champion, throwing in more balloons the very bottom cannon, the very uh, bottom quarter of the base there. The queen's still moving along the outside of the base on the bottom edge. Or excuse me, that's the king. That's the king. The king with the unicorn. No, the queen was the one with the unicorn. The queen had the healer puppet as well, but she went down and passed it all over to the king. I mean, she's not going to be able to support the backside. Kazuma might be in trouble here, guys. I think he definitely needed the dragons to go into the Eagle Artillery area and get the clan castle finished being dealt with and get this Eagle Artillery down, but taking those strikes all the way through the base here. Obviously going to give him some trouble. He's still going to have to go back to that gold or that uh, that drill over the right hand corner, but the world champion is getting wrecked here. There's way too much damage, way too much on this base, but a 69 gaming can triple right now. They can be right back in this war. This one will end at 85%. Uh, Whenever I see a warden walk nowadays, I have to go check to see if it's going to be paired with a fireball because that's the way that I want to use it. Although I haven't been able to upgrade the fireball at any of my accounts just yet. I'm still working on the equipment that I use on my normal attacks there and I'll eventually get around to it. I make sure that every time they release an epic piece of equipment, whether I am ready to upgrade it and start using it right away or not, I... Make sure that I unlock it at a minimum so I don't have to buy it later for gems. Which, by the way, if you guys didn't see, if you haven't checked the uh, trader in a while, and you missed the chance at the frozen arrow, it is in the trader now, so make sure you pick it up there if you haven't already. But, Manjil making his way forward there with the warden taking the eagle artillery. And the, it's still, it feels really weird to have like a slow-paced attack here to set, a, set attack up with the long push like this, but that's... Just kind of what has been caused by everybody having to do their attacks in a minute. I feel like every single war I am on, I have to like talk like three times as fast to be able to keep up with all the root riders going in and pack that much information into a quarter of the time, you know? <laughs> However, the slow approach here with the Super Bowlers and Warden Walks in general. Like, let's keep in mind that even though this meta has shifted a lot in esports, the Warden Walks didn't just suddenly stop being good. They're still one of the strongest way to set up an attack in this entire game. And if you're going to take your time on the approach and you have the time, then it is probably one of the strongest ways that you can do it. However, the World Champion over the left side of the base there did take a lot of damage there early. Even though he had a skeleton spell down to give her some protection through the defense of World Champion, but he popped the World Champion with the Hog Puppet and the haste file and she can surge her way forward there king with the giant gauntlet over to the right side making his way through the tesla farm in the defensive king and super bowlers are able to rip through the core of the base there and running the life gem with the super bowlers i think a lot of people are tempted to run that rage gem and honestly the rage gem is the is probably one of the worst choices for a award equipment on Super Bowlers because we typically bring so many rages into Super Bowler attacks in general that they don't really need it. It just ends up being a lot of, uh, it be, ends up being a waste of equipment. So either the Healing Tome or the Life Gem, best choices for a Super Bowler attack, but Mangeal gets it done. It is close on time, but that's the way it goes when you spend a long, long Warden Walk. But at the end, it's a triple. And now they're only behind on percentage. Double clone, dragons, Klaus going in with a super minion bomb as well. What do we expect out of this? Here goes the blimp, blimp, oh, blimp, blimp, oh, rip the dream. Klaus gets hit right away there with the black air bombs and the blimp falls. What do you do with the double clone now? What do you do? How do you get the town hall down? This is gonna be a big problem. All the dragons are splitting away. Lots of black air bombs still going off in the area. Did he just walk into a bait? I feel like he did. But he'll get the clan castle destroyed there with those super beans. So at least he's getting some kind of value out of it. But the town hall is going to stay standing. And we'll see if he can get his way back into there. But he still hasn't found a use for the clones. And he needs to figure out what to do with them to get some kind of value. The queen down south here was already deployed on the outside of the base there. To try to keep these dragons in check. But Klaus, what's happening? What do we do? How if you're in this situation, how the heck do you get the town hall down? I feel like you have to put the road champion into it, but what does he do with the clone? 69% right now. 69% gonna pass up that. And I guess you have to put the road champion in the town hall, but I I guess he could throw in a clone with a bunch of 
super barbarians and do it that way. But the Eagle Artillery is still standing, so he delayed that a really long time. Hopefully he doesn't get hit by the Ricochet Cannon. That could be a very, very big problem. But he put a Skeletal Spell over there to try to keep the Ricochet Cannon off of his Road Champion. But Ground Skellies are intercepting her right now. And she'll chase for just a second there, but they do split off over there to the left. Eagle Artillery not going to the Road Champion, which is a good thing. Going down to the King and the Phoenix down there. Goes invisible. Kind of risky with that invisibility placement there. Almost actually covered the Town Hall with that. But there's a Tornado Trap. There's more Ground Skellies. Take it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> he got it. He got it under control. And I don't, I don't know if this is enough percentage to be able to get him through. But he'll throw in the last Super Barbarian. Freeze what he can. And clone the Super Barbs. But they get wrecked. And... Klaus gets baited. And that, you just don't see that with the Rewriter attacks. You don't see that where you have an attack just have one trap or two traps sometimes. Maybe if the tornado catches a blimp or something like that, then you see those attacks crawl to a halt. But I'm looking at the percentage split right now. And would you believe it? 69 Gaming would have a lead on a 99% right now. We saw a lot of people trying to do those dragon attacks with the clones in our World Championship Qualifier. And luckily for them, they didn't run into the same problem that Klaus just did. They were not hitting tornado traps. They were not hitting black air bombs outside of when the board ability was active. And they were lucky enough to not have the same problems as Klaus just did. But he had to do whatever adjustment he had to do there to be able to get the two star because that is ultimately what will give them a chance to be able to recover the war from that. But now we see Ghost, and right now Ghost doesn't have a siege machine selected. He actually has just the base troops there. So I'm expecting him to swap that out here for something else in a moment. Ice Golem pops off. Really, really nice placement of that Ice Golem there to catch the invisibility tower. Make it so he doesn't have to burn a second invis or a second uh, freeze to lock that down. Well, Queen getting wrecked here. Run the uh, Archer Puppet. Maxed out that Archer Puppet 2, which can give him some good cover through some point defenses, but the Archers don't stand in the right position to stop that Monolith from going off. And now the question is, do we freeze the Invisibility Tower to get through it? it might take it with the crash damage right there. No, it's just a standing, so it could end up rearming and going off again. You have to go back to that area. The Bloons are going to turn immediately back around there and go to it, which is going to cause a split of the Bloons here to go over to the Archer Tower. Would have been nice if he was able to put the World Champion in right in between the King of the Queen to go in there and finish breaking the Ring of Defenses because we are always, always, always trying to make sure that we don't end up with a split of the troops right there. But the World Champion is the point up top there, and he did get the Archer Tower down, but the Scattershot claims all of those Bloons right there. Gets the Hog Puppet to spawn there with the World Champion. Hog Puppet and it looks like a Royal Gem. So she gets a little bit of HP recover, but that doesn't save her very long. And wow, just like that, another defense. This back end here gave him some trouble. And it looks like he's going to lock it in at 89%, which means Navi is going to be about nine buildings in the lead as the stars tie up again. Navi, once again, going to put their faith into a blimp. This one, double clone for visibility it will be super barbarians bringing back a classic by the looks of it could be a super archer bomb but he will go ahead and start it with the warden warden running the rage gem to boost these blues damage output but also he'll protect the blooms with the eternal tome the same time that he protects the blip to go into the core of the base and it looks like he's gonna try to land right on top of that castle but a tornado oh so yeah poison tower throws inside of the poison where is he? Oh, 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 red air bombs. Oh, <laughs> he lands right on top of the town hall, but he's getting pulled out. He's getting pulled out. Get the town hall. Come on. Oh, okay. He got it. He got it. He got it. He got it. And he clears the core. He cleared the whole core. I thought that poison tower was going to wreck him, but no. He clears the core. He broke the ring of defenses at the very top of the base there with the blues that went in under that rage. And now he'll go in at the very bottom, and he's going to attack the Eagle Artillery as his priority here. But unfortunately, that means that he's going to end up with a split. However, with every single defense that is remaining being on the edge of the base, he is going to make so that he is going to be able to put Super Barbarians into tanking positions. And they, as soon as they deploy, they'll immediately be able to pick up the tanking and protect whatever hero that they are going in front of. But he needs to get the Rogue Champion alive. We're on the verge of going down. Already used her ability. Has the Hog Puppet in front of her. Super Barbarians. And the Head Hunters get him through the defensive queen. Ricochet Cannon going off here. Ground Skellies. But she gets taken out. That's going to be a problem. He's going to have to go back to that area. 
Maybe if we had a, a couple of minions or something like that, they could go clear that area because there's no air targeting defense. Wait, electric owl? Electric owl? Oh, come on. Come on, Tesla. <laughs> Somebody get the Tesla down. And then electric owl can finish off that area. Sit the minion down south as well with the king and the queen still working over the right side. Throwing in the rest of the super power barriers over to the left side. He's still got a couple on standby, but with the walls open right there, he does step his way into it. And looks like he's got it under control. All right. Going to have to go back to the core of the base here, but he's got enough power now. Not too concerned about that. The queen does go down. It's going to take him some time to go in and get this poison tower down. And with the king still alive, not going to be a problem. And he's going to swarm the super power barriers over to the side there to get in there and get it. So Diva will get the triple. And Navi will have the lead at the end of this force exchange but that means the 69 gaming needs to get the triple on this next attack and then they gotta hope that they can get a defense hope that they can stop stars let's also remember that as they step away from the root riders and we go with the different attacks there just because the root riders are so strong right now and they seem to not even care that we got a new level to the eagle artillery New level to the Monolith, new level to the Battle Builders. It doesn't seem to affect the Root Riders that much that those levels happen. But all the other attacks are also receiving extra damage there as a result. And so that Eagle Artillery is, was well, it already was the strongest defense in the game. And it is going to continue to be and is now stronger than ever. And so getting it down early in the attack, especially in a Lalo attack, especially in an attack where we have vulnerable groups of balloons that if they take a, a strike when they're all grouped up there, then they can all go down in droves. You got to be very, very mindful of that. But to leave it unactivated for now. Remember, it only uh, activates there after you drop 200 camp space of troops. And with the heroes making their way to the town hall there, they'll get the defensive queen out of the way there. If they can get all the way past that and get the defensive world champion, that'd be a very big deal. But I'm looking at the remaining sweepers on the base as well. Sweepers are facing to the top right. And we need to get the royal champion down here still. So we could end up going on the left side here and try to get her out of the way, which is what he's going to do. And make sure that he can get the ward ability to protect him through a round of eagle artillery strikes there. And make sure that he can protect headhunters to go in there and get the defensive road champion down. That's the smartest way to approach this. But he's going to be taking eagle artillery strikes there for an extended period of time because of the long approach. And so we could see that being a major, major impactful thing on this attack. Especially if we run into red air bombs behind the town hall here. There we go. Going off now. We got a healing tome. No, we got a life gem. Life gem the core. More red air bombs going off there. The balloons are very, very, very vulnerable right now. In the multi inferno, need to take it, but they do get it. They get the one shot. More balloons in the scatter shot. Finally, get to the eagle artillery now. Yeti's coming out of the flame flinger at the very bottom of the base. There will get the extra support there if they can actually take some damage. But starting to lose a lot of troops here very, very fast. The scatter shot stays standing. Expo picking off everything on the ground. And yeah, that's that's not an easy thing to make your way through right there. That was a tough back end. And I kind of, I kind of saw. That that was going to be a difficult Lalo. Maybe that wasn't the right choice on this base, very clearly. So, <laughs> just goes to show you that this game is a lot more difficult when you put the Root Riders on the sidelines. And we see that every single time that we have these tournaments where we ban the Root Riders. So, the On Fire Invitational and shortly, we'll be having the Mango Tournament. I like the meta when we see misses. It makes the triples more exciting when it's not just a time race there with Root Riders for eight attacks of 10 every single war. SARS is in. It is gonna be a zap into Lalo. Zap into Lalo, which will decide the war here. Whether it goes in an obvious favor or gives opportunity for 69 gaming. But we saw some misses with the Lalo. And now we get to see one of the best Lalo attackers in the world. Show us how it's done. Using the lightning. And then waiting. And then what? <laughs> Why was he waiting? He just wanted to wait for 20 or 30 seconds to tick off the clock there. And then begin his heroes in. You know, that's a very abnormal thing to see. Especially in the current meta. To see that much time off the clock there. But then again, we know that stars after... He gets the lightning. He's typically able to clear the base within about a minute and 15 seconds. So we'll see how fast he moves from here. But even still, even still taking his time. In the World Championship qualifiers, 
he would have already been about to finish the attack right now, which is insane to even think about. And at this stage, we would have had the Lalo on full, full dive into the base there. Like heroes would be starting, then lightning while the heroes are moving, and then lightning's going, or the, the Lalo's going in, and everything happens simultaneously. So it's a very, very different pace when we see him slow things down a bit here. We need to get that town hall to go down. Uh oh. Well, that's that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? That's a that's a little bit of a problem and a half. We got to get that battle drill to secure the town hall. Then we got the ice golems that are still there. The hound going over there to the town hall as the air defenses are all removed off of the base. Okay, town hall is going down, but I, I don't know. It feels like he lost a lot right there. He's got seven more blues on standby, and most of them are gone. Me? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe if you take your time, you have more too much time to think about it, and you start to make mistakes. Is he seriously going to throw this wharf right now? Okay. Into the 70s we go. De definitely gets to the artillery with the road champion. She disappears from the Spear Fox there. She's trying to stay alive. Got the defensive heroes off of the back end. The battle drill is still moving, but the road champion is gone. Dicky is still alive there from the warden, getting some stuns. And that battle drill keeps on moving with the Diggy getting stuns and the battle drill getting stuns. He still has a chance in the back end. I think he's got the percentage to be able to get the win here. And there goes his warden into the scatter shot. Dragon Rider pops out of the battle drill. Blues pop out and he'll still get it done anyways. Why? All right, goodness. A little bit of a scare there. A little bit of a scare. I'll be real. I thought that was going to be a miss. But no, he's got it under control. The battle drill definitely carried that. And that's how he gets it done. So stars, put an obvi up to 13 stars and they will win another week here in the On Fire Invitational. Root Riders, not necessary and not allowed. We got one more attack though. Let's get to the final attack here from 69 Gaming. Let's see what they got. Let's see if they had a chance in the first place. We're gonna see a queen charge Lalo in this one here. And this space right here, uh, Navi just gave this base away on their Twitter. So if you go over to the Navi Clash of Clans Twitter, that has all of the players tagged in their bio, and you can pull up all of these guys, follow, drop them a follow on Twitter, drop a follow to the Navi Clash of Clans channel, and they just shared this base and a bunch of other ones. So if you're looking for some good bases, if you want this base specifically, which held very, very well and gave a lot of teams a lot of trouble as they are playing for their golden ticket this weekend, this last weekend. And so this would be a big one. I I'm thinking I'm going to put this one into my random spin wars here because I feel like a lot of players would struggle with it. So we'll see. We'll see. Like, it's kind of a weird base here with, like, the Town Hall Island off, the Monoth Island off, the Inferno's Island off. Like, it's just island after island after island, which is kind of there to mess up the pathing for Root Riders. So they just lap around those compartments instead of going into them and take a bunch of extra damage there before they finally get the access in. It's an anti-spam base, and we see that a lot in a lot of uh, different anti-spam bases where we see little pockets little islands of important defenses that make it so that you actually have to put some thought in how to get into those and when they were played in speed meta the little islanded off sections of the base did a lot of work there to slow down and force them to use different strategies because you can't just spam your way through that so if you are receiving a lot of spam attacks here, then this base might be one that you want to pick up for yourself but in the meantime i'll keep on using it for us and Berlin is doing a pretty decent job of picking it apart right now. But if you got to do a Queen Charge Lalo to be able to pick off a base here, then most players that you're going to run into in Renaissance Wars are not going to be able to execute an attack like this. And even this is struggling a bit there. Even though this is probably one of the more optimal ways to approach a base like this, it's still not an easy one to get through. And he still has to get back to that monolith right there. He's got a Queen ability and a Roar Champion ability. Our champion has the hog puppet of the sinking shield, throws it right there, hits everything except for the monolith. But I think he's gonna overpower it one way or another. That was a well, well done attack right there. Not an easy base to work through, and those are always a pain. I think everybody knows that. But he gets it done. And if they would have got the defense when Stars was going in and he wasn't able to recover that back to a triple, then that might have been the attack that decided the war. But crazy, crazy wars. Much more variety. Love to see what we have the Root Riders taking out of the equation 
And I'm a big fan of this On Fire Invitational, and I'm looking forward to the Mango Cup as well. So thanks for guys, thanks for, thanks for watching, guys. And thank you for using code ERIC. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already liked this video, and we'll see you in the next one.